Hello. In this session, we will look at the EC2 pricing models. Now, the EC2 service, it provides us with uh, different, different options that uh, we can use to save up some money when we talk about uh, running a virtual machine or running a server uh, using this EC2 service. Now, we know that EC2 can be used to uh, launch any virtual machines or any servers that we want, any virtualized servers that we want. Now, depending on your use case, depending on the requirement, we have different, different pricing models that we can choose, um, you know, which will help us to reduce our cost, reduce our um, cost related to the uh, running of the EC2 instances or the virtual machines. Once again, before we start off with the session, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So let's get started with this. So to help better manage and optimize our EC2 cost. So this is all uh, related to your EC2 cost. And this pricing model, this will mainly help us to manage our cost and, the, and you know reduce the cost. Uh, for this, AWS provides you with different, different purchasing options that we can go with. So the first option we have is your on-demand. Uh, this is one of the default uh, option that we get. Then we have your uh, savings plans. Then we have your reserved instances. We have dedicated instances. We have dedicated hosts. We have spot instances, and then we have your capacity reservation. So these are some of the options that are available for us when we talk about um, uh, saving the cost related to our EC2 machines. So here, if you go to the console on the left hand side, you should be able to see some of these options. So you have spot requests, saving plans, reserved instances, dedicated instances, scheduled instances, capacity reservation. So these are the uh, pricing models that are available for us when we talk about your EC2 instances. Now let's look at each of these one by one. So first we will look at your on-demand instances. Now with your on-demand instances, uh, we can launch the instances whenever we want. So as the name suggests, it's your on-demand. So as a user, whenever you want to launch the instances, we can go ahead and launch the instances. Now with this, we will be paying uh, by the second for the instances that we launch. So let's say you run the instances for 30 seconds. You're only going to pay for that 30 seconds. Um, uh, here you'll be paying for the compute capacity by the second and there's no long term commitment associated with this. So you can launch the instances and you can terminate the instances whenever you want. And you're only going to pay for the running um, uh, cost. So how the duration that you have uh, run the instances, that is where you will be paying the cost. There's no commitment. There's no minimum cost that you'll have to pay for this. Then launch the instances whenever you want. Uh, we pay only for the seconds that the on-demand instances are in the running state with a minimum of 60 seconds. Right. So uh, when we launch the instances, your uh, your instances transitions to the running state and that is where you'll have to pay the money and your cost will be calculated in seconds and the minimum is a 60 second. Then you will have the full control over the instances lifecycle. You can decide when you want to launch the instance, terminate the instance, hibernate, start, reboot or uh, terminate the instances. So whenever we want, we can do that. On-demand instances are recommended for applications uh, that um, need short-term irregular workloads that cannot be interrupted. So any bad job or any application that you want to run without any interruption, then you can go with your on-demand instances. The next option we have is the savings plans. Now savings plans offers us a flexible pricing model uh, when compared to your on-demand instances. So this can save us up to 72% of the cost when compared to the on-demand instances. So this provides us with lower prices on instance uh, EC2 instances usage regardless of the instance family, size, operating system, tenancy or the region. So this provides savings beyond the on-demand rates in exchange for a commitment so under this you will be getting into a contract you you will need to basically commit to aws and that contract period will be either for one year or for a three-year period so in exchange for this commitment aws gives you a, a discount in return so the prices we will pay for the usage stays the same through uh, the plan term and we can pay for the commitment using all upfront, partial upfront or no upfront payment options. So under this, you get three options. You can either pay all the payment upfront or you can pay only the partial amount or you can pay no upfront. You can go with the no upfront where you're not going to pay any money in advance. You will pay it during the billing cycle. So that's your savings plans. Next, you have the reserved instances. Now, under reserved instances, this again provides you significant savings when compared to the on-demand instances 
these are not physical instances but rather a billing discount that we get um, for using the on-demand instances in the AWS account. So this is also your on-demand instances but there's a discount that gets applied to the uh, billing. So must match certain attributes. So with this, there are certain attributes that uh, we will need to match such as your instance type, your region in order to benefit from the billing discount. So there are certain instance attributes. Um, only those instance attributes are applicable for the billing discount. So we again under this, you will need to get into a contract. The contract will be either for one year or three year uh, commitment. So payment options available are upfront, partial upfront and no upfront. And this has two options. You can go with the standard and convertible. Under standard, you cannot change the instance attributes. Once you reserve the instances, we cannot change the instance attributes. Under the convertible, we have the option of changing the instance attributes. The next option we have is a spot instances. So these instances are basically your spare EC2 capacity that is available for us. And again, this is much lesser than compared to the on-demand instances. The hourly price for a spot instance is called a spot price. So under this, we have a hourly uh, price that we incur and we call that as your spot price. Uh, cost effective choice, if we can be flexible about when our applications run and if the applications can be interrupted. So under your spot instances, there are chances that the servers uh, can be interrupted. So uh, AWS um, has the capacity to interrupt the instances. So uh, the use case for this would be any applications that can be interrupted. So even if the uh, application stop, there's not a big issue, then we can go with your spot instances. So we pay the spot price for spot instances, which is set by EC2 and adjusted gradually based on the long-term supply and demand for the spot instances. And spot instances run until we terminate them. Capacity is no longer available. So either when the um, uh, capacity is no longer available, spot instances are terminated or when we terminate the instance. So this is where, um, you know, there are chances that your applications can get interrupted if the capacity is no longer available. So if we or EC2 interrupts a running spot instance, we are charged for the seconds used or the full hour. So that's basically your cost. The next option we have is a dedicated host. So dedicated host is a physical server with EC2 instance capacity and this is fully dedicated for us to use. So by default, what happens is whenever we uh, launch our EC2 instances, there is a server, there is a, a physical hardware, right, which gets shared among multiple people. Now, if you don't want that to happen, we can go with a dedicated host where the hardware is only available for us. Only we can use that and it will not be shared with other people. So allows us to use existing per socket, per core or per VM software licenses. And this supports multiple instance sizes on the same dedicated host. Uh, provides on-demand dedicated host where the billing is automatically activated when we allocate a dedicated host to our account. And this also provides with uh, dedicated host reservations with a billing discount compared to running on-demand dedicated host. So under this, you have two options. You have the on-demand dedicated host and you have the dedicated host reservation. So compared, you know, depending on your use case, you can choose. So however, so basically your dedicated hosts are basically your physical hardware, which is dedicated only for you to use and it will not be shared with other people. The next option we have is your dedicated instances. So again, by default, whenever we launch our EC2 instances, they run on a shared hardware. The hardware will be shared by multiple people. Now, if you want to have a dedicated uh, hardware, you can go with your dedicated instances. So pricing for dedicated instances is different from pricing for on-demand instances. To guarantee that sufficient capacity is available to launch dedicated instance, we can purchase dedicated reserved instances or capacity reservations. Dedicated instances that belong to different AWS accounts are physically isolated at a hardware level. So under this, your isolations will be at the AWS account level. So even if those accounts are linked to a single payer account. So if you have like three different AWS accounts, the hardware will be isolated. So uh, a hardware which is used by one AWS account will not be used by the other AWS account. So dedicated instances might share hardware with other instances from the same AWS account that are not dedicated instances. So it is possible that instances within the same account can share the hardware but not from other AWS accounts. So dedicated instances are EC2 instances that run on hardware that is dedicated to a single customer.
And the last option we have is your capacity reservation. So enables you to reserve compute capacity for your EC2 instances in a specific availability zone for any duration. So under this, we have the option to reserve certain capacity for future use. So let's say maybe you have a, a sale that is coming up and you want to reserve certain capacity for that so that you don't have a last minute rush, then you can go with your capacity reservation. So mitigate against the risk of being unable to get on demand capacity in case there are capacity constraints can be used for disaster recovery, regulatory requirements or any business critical events. So uh, we can create the capacity reservations at any time without any long term commitment. So you can go ahead and create the capacity reservations and you can uh, delete it at any time you want. There's no commitment under this. The billing starts as soon as the capacity reservations is provisioned in your AWS account. So you'll have to pay for that capacity reservation that you're creating. And once you delete it, the billing will be stopped. And once you create these capacity reservations, you can go ahead and use this whenever you want. So these are some of the pricing models that we have under your EC2. So again, here you should be able to see that. So by default, whenever we launch our instances, we are launching the on-demand instances. But if you want some other instances, you can choose which one you want. So here is your spot instances where, uh, you know, this is basically your spare EC2 instances that AWS provides. So you can request for the spot instances. Then you have the savings plans. You have the reserved instances, dedicated instances, capacity reservations. That's about your EC2 pricing models. That's all for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.